Hey, Flipped Geometry, how you doing? We are here talking about chapter 2.2 .2 in the BJU Geometry, 4th edition. We're looking today at the first time you will see truth tables and statements that are either true or false and what you do about that. This chapter leads you up to being able to do proofs, and you're going to be doing proofs very soon. And before you can prove things using logic, we have to exercise your brain with just logic in general. So that's what uh, this lesson is about, is learning when statements are true or not true and how you can use that in a proof. Let's define the most important term that you're going to be using in this section, and that is the word statement. In the context of logic, a statement is a sentence that is either true or false. I could say something like, I have yellow toes. Well, that's false, but it is a statement, right? Or I could say something like, I have 10 toes, and even though I'm not going to show you my feet, that is true. So statements can be either true or false, and we're going to use that digital relationship here in a little bit. Statements can be negated. So a the, the negative of a statement, you would read not, and then whatever that statement is, always has the opposite value. So if the statement is, I have yellow toes, then... Um, the opposite of that is I do not have yellow toes, right? So a statement can be negated and the negative or the negated statement always has the opposite truth value. So I have yellow toes is false. I do not have yellow toes is true. The opposite statement is always the opposite value in a truth table. We have a little symbol here. This, uh, ooh, like it just went away, magic. This little swooshy symbol means not. So that's the opposite of that. So if the statement P is I have yellow toes, then not P is I do not have yellow toes, right? And so you would read not P. And this little symbol just means the opposite of or negated. Um, universal qualifiers, things like all and every, we represent them with an upside down A. So this A written upside down, is the shorthand that means always or every. And we've got to be careful when we do statements like this in logic or in geometry or in any kind of argument because it's very hard to have a, a, a universal statement be true unless you know that it is something universally true. So um, be, be cautious when you see statements with this quantifier. Uh, make sure that you're reading it carefully and that it is in fact a true statement. Okay? so. If P represents men are sinners, that's the statement that P stands for, then this little qualifier, every P, means all men are sinners. Every man is a sinner, okay? So those statements are able to be qualified. Um, we also have an existential qualifier, and that's a backwards E, and that implies one or more. So if Q represents boys like to play baseball, then this little uh, existential qualifier before Q means that there exists somewhere at least one boy who likes to play baseball, or you could say some boys like to play baseball, um, one or more than one. Let's do some examples here. So if the statement is there exists a student who gets straight A's, um, then we want to negate that statement. So uh, statement P is this, there is a student somewhere who gets straight A's. Not P would be something like, no student gets straight A's, or there does not exist a student who gets straight A's, something along those lines. Okay, We want to make sure that um, as we're negating, if it has a qualifier like there exists somewhere, then it's best to keep that same wording uh, in the resultant statement um, along with the negative. So the, the slide here says no student gets straight A's. It might actually be a better answer to say there does not exist a student who gets straight A's. It's a little more awkward to say, but then you still see the, the existential qualifier um, and the negator, right? So try to be as careful with these things as you can. Negate the statement some pies are not cherry pies. Well, the opposite of that would be that all pies are cherry pies, right? There does not exist a pie that is not a cherry pie. All pies are cherry pies. Okay. Um, no square is a circle. There is somewhere a square that is a circle. That's kind of a nonsensical statement. 
But again, it's important to notice that as we're messing with statements, we can modify the statement and make it say something that is totally not true. Um, but that's kind of the point of what we're getting to, is to negate something changes its truth statement. So R, no square is a circle, that's true. The opposite of R should be false. There exists a square that is a circle. There's no such thing as that. But that's why it's a negative. It's, it's negated, right? A negated statement has the opposite truth value as the statement that you started with. So here's an example of a negation in a truth table. This is a very simple truth table. You are going to see lots of very big truth tables. So take a breath and let's make friends with truth tables. If statement P is true, then not P is false. If statement P is false, then not P is true. Right? So negating a statement changes its value in a truth table. If that doesn't make sense, take a moment and look at that again. The next kind of truth statement that we're going to look at is a conjunction. A conjunction is an and statement. It's where you take two statements, and in order for the conjunction to be true, both of them have to agree. They have to both be true. So a conjunction is a compound statement formed by connecting two statements with the word and. The conjunction P and Q is denoted as P and then this little caret symbol, which you would read as and Q. And this is easy to remember because it looks almost like an A. If you were to cross that, it would be an A. So P and Q, um, the little the, the caret symbol there is the conjunction. Joins these statements together. In order for it to be true, both parts of the statement must be true. That's different than a disjunction. Conjunction is an and statement. A disjunction is an or statement. So a disjunction is a compound statement formed by connecting two statements with the word or. Okay, So P or Q is this P and then it looks like a capital V. It's just the op opposite, the upside down of the and statement. So it's it looks kind of like a capital V, but it's bigger than a, a V would be in the font. It extends you know, higher and lower than the than the letter V would, um, and it means or. So in order for a, for a disjunction to be correct, either P or Q has to be true. So we'll see some examples of that here shortly. Let's look at a truth table for a conjunction. P statement, Q statement, and then the conjunction P and Q. In order for P and Q to be true, both P and Q must be true. Okay, so if P is true and Q is true, then P and Q is true. However, if there's any other combination of trues and false, then P and Q is false. So if P is true but Q is false, then this conjunction is false. If P is false but Q is true, the conjunction is still false because they both have to be true for the statement to be true. And of course, if they're both false, then the statement is false. So this is a very common beginning for a truth table. You're going to be in truth tables for a while, so you need to make friends with this. Two statements, and there are four possible arrangements of true and false. Um, the easy way to set these problems up is to just go true, true, false, false, and then alternate. True, false, true, false. And then you have your four possible ways of combining true and false. Okay. Sometimes you'll have three statements, in which case you don't have four possibilities, you have eight possibilities. But we will we'll get to those in a little bit. Okay. So this is a truth table for conjunction. In order for conjunctions to be true, both the underlining statements must be true. Okay. Here's a disjunction. This is an OR statement, P or Q. In order for a disjunction to be true, either P or Q can be true. So true, true, true. Yeah, we only needed one true statement. We've got two. Boy, howdy, is that true, right? If P is true and Q is false, the disjunction is still true because OR means that as long as one of them are true, then the statement works. So also false true, that also works, okay? or statement. As long as one of them are true, then the statement is true. The only time a disjunction is false is if both P and Q, both of the, of the statements that we're looking at, are false. False, false, false is the only way to falsify a, dis, a disjunction. To falsify a conjunction, 
um, you need to have anything other than true true. Okay, so keep those two similar ideas separated in your mind. So true or false, any three points are collinear or the union of opposite rays forms a right angle. Okay, so I have two statements I and I have an or. I have P or Q, right? Any three points are collinear. Is that true? No, it's not. You can easily have three non-collinear points. Or the union of opposite rays forms a right angle. Is that true? No, opposite rays would form a straight line. So I have false or false. And this is the only way you're going to falsify a disjunction with an or is if both statements are false. In this example, they are false. Both simple statements are false. So the disjunction is also false, right? You can go back to this truth table and see false, false, false. Okay? All right. Let's do another example. Make a truth table for P and, now parentheses work the same way in truth statements as they do in algebra. We have to do that first. P and Q or not R. Oh boy, this is fun. So I have P, Q, and R, and all of them could be true or false. So I actually have eight conditions. True, 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 false, 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 false. True, true, false, false, true, true, false, false. True, false, true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. And that makes every possible combination of P, Q, and R, whether they are true or false. Okay? You will get used to writing that as well because you're going to have a couple of these problems in your homework throughout the, the next several lessons. Okay? So I need to first look at not R. R is the, the first statement I have to look at. I have to negate R. So if R is true, then not R is false. If R is false, then not R is true. Continue that all the way down the column. If it's true here, it's false. If it's false here, it's true. True, false, false, true, false, true, false, false, true, etc. Okay, now, Q or not R. In order for this to be true, either Q or not R have to be true. So true and false, the, the disjunction works because it's an or. This was true. This can be true. This is true, and so is that, so this can be true. False, false, false. False, true, as long as one of them is true, then it's true. True, false, still true. True, true, of course that's true. False, false, false. False, true, true. So this column gives me the meaning for Q or not R, right? Now I have this. Now I have to look at P and Q or not R. So I'm looking at this column and this column. And in order for this to work, uh, I have to have both of these halves be true. So true, true, true. True, true, true. True, false, false. A conjunction cannot work if either of the statements underneath are false, right? True, 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 false, true, false. False, true, false, 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 true, false. So this is my answer uh, for what conditions make this statement work. And if you need to look at that example again, that's perfectly fine. Go ahead and rewind the video and take another look at it. But uh, you will be doing this a whole lot, so you need to get comfortable with it. And that actually wraps up this lesson 2.2. So if you have any questions, make note of them, and we will... Uh, talk about it tomorrow in class. Until then, God bless you. Jesus loves you, and so do I. Have a good night.